Daddy Long Legs. Chapter 1. A Perfectly Awful Day. The first Wednesday of every month was always a perfectly awful day at the John Greer Home for Orphans. That's when the trustees and the ladies' committee visited us. Of course, we gave them tea and sandwiches, but this was more than a social call. These men and women were also inspecting us. Everything at our orphanage had to be perfect. There was so much work to do. And as the oldest orphan, I, Jerusha Abbott, did most of it. One Wednesday, I was on my feet at five o'clock in the morning. I mopped floors, dusted chairs, and made beds. I helped to scrub and dress 97 squirming orphans. I also reminded them to behave. If a trustee or lady speaks to you, what do you say? The children looked at each other and burst into giggles. <laughs> you say, yes sir, or no ma'am. Remember your manners and be polite to anyone you meet today. Mrs. Lippett, the matron at the orphanage, rushed me through these extra chores. She appeared calm to our guests, but behind the scenes, she was often quite frantic. This Wednesday, like all the others, finally dragged to a close. As our guests were leaving, I returned to my regular duties in room F. I was in charge of 11 little girls, ages four to seven. It was time for supper. So I straightened their dresses and wiped their noses. Then I sent them off to the dining room. I stayed upstairs and sank into a window seat. I pressed my aching head against the cool glass. The day seemed like a success. The ladies and gentlemen had made their rounds, read their reports, and sipped their tea. From my seat, I watched their carriages and automobiles rolling out of the orphanage gates. In my mind, I followed them to the big houses dotting the hills. I imagined myself riding home in one of those carriages. I wore a fur coat and a velvet hat. But then I tried to picture the inside of my imaginary house, and I couldn't. That was because I'd never been in a real house in all my 18 years. Jerusha Abbott, you are wanted in the office. And I think you better hurry up. Tommy Dillon came singing up the stairs. He'd recently joined the choir, so he sang all the time. I pulled myself away from the window. Who wants me? I asked anxiously. Mrs. Lippet, and I think she's mad. <laughs> oh, oh no, I groaned. What did I do? Were the sandwiches too thick today? Did a lady visitor see the hole in an orphan's stocking? Tommy shrugged. He had no idea, but he followed me downstairs. The long lower hallway was dark. One last trustee stood in the open door. He was a tall man. He motioned for an automobile to pull up to the door. As the automobile approached, its headlights cast the man's shadow against the wall. The shadow had very long arms and legs. Suddenly, my anxiety melted and I began to laugh. <laughs> that shadow looks just like a giant daddy long legs, I whispered to Tommy. <laughs> he laughed too. Good luck! He sang as he left me outside Mrs. Lippett's door. I can find the humor in most things. So, still smiling about Daddy Longlegs, I knocked on Mrs. Lippett's door. Much to my surprise, the matron looked almost as cheerful as I did. Sit down, Jerusha. 
I have something to say to you. I dropped into the nearest chair. An automobile flashed past the window. Mrs. Lippett glanced at it. Did you notice the gentleman who just left? I only saw his back. He's one of our wealthiest trustees. Over the years, he has given large sums of money to the orphanage. But I'm not allowed to mention his name. I didn't know what to say. I wasn't used to talking to her about trustees and their strange requests. In the past, he has taken an interest in several of our boys. Do you remember Charles Benton or Henry Freeze? Mr. I mean, this trustee sent them both through college. They repaid him with hard work and success. That's all he required. The matron glanced at the window again, as if expecting the gentleman to return. So far, he has only helped boys. I've never been able to interest him in helping girls. No matter how smart they were, I guess he dislikes girls. Mrs. Lippett paused. She seemed to expect a reply here, so I said the first thing that came into my head. Yes, ma'am. Satisfied, Mrs. Lippett continued. Today at our meeting, the question of your future came up. Yes, ma'am, I replied politely. Inside, I was filled with a mix of curiosity and dread. Daddy Longlegs, Chapter 2, A Rare Opportunity. The question of your future came up at today's meeting, Mrs. Lippett repeated. And we discussed it in great detail. I continued to sit in stunned silence in the matron's office. You've done well here, Jerusha. She went on. And we let you attend the village high school, despite some problems with your behavior. She frowned at me. I tried to look guilty. But you're 18 now and finishing high school. We can't take care of you for much longer. As you know, we don't often keep orphans after age 16. You were lucky to have two extra years here. I'd worked hard in exchange for my stay at the orphanage for those two extra years. And my education had always come second. Today, for example, Mrs. Lippett had kept me home from school to work. But I was too anxious about my future to say anything. Usually we'd send you out to find a job. However, your grades have been excellent. Miss Pritchard, who's on our ladies' committee, talked to your English teacher. The teacher said your work was brilliant. She also gave Miss Pritchard a story you'd written called Blue Wednesday. This time, my guilty expression was real. Mrs. Lippett always said my imagination would get me into trouble. And now, I guess it had. Blue Wednesday was a work of fiction, but it was based on the days when the trustees and ladies committee came to visit. Miss Pritchard read that story aloud to us. I think it was rude to mock the orphanage, especially after we've done so much for you. Mrs. Lippett looked at me with disapproval. Luckily, some people have a strange sense of humor and found your story funny. Mr. That is, the trustee who just left thought that it was quite amusing. On the strength of that disrespectful paper, he's sending you to college. To college? My eyes grew big. Mrs. Lippett nodded. He waited until after the meeting to discuss the details with me. They are quite unusual. I must say the gentleman is odd. He believes you have talent. He plans to educate you to become a writer. A writer? I said in shock. Who knows if you'll succeed? Only time will tell. The matron described the trustee's plan. I would spend the rest of the summer working at the orphanage. Miss Pritchard would help me choose new clothes. 
the trustee would pay for them. He would also pay my tuition and board directly to the college. I would also receive an allowance of $35 a month. That's a very generous amount, Jerusha, said Mrs. Lippett. Far too generous for a girl who has never managed her own money. But he wanted you to feel equal to the other girls at college. Mrs. Lippett explained that the I trustee's secretary would send me the money every month. In return for all this, you must write letters to the trustee, she said. These letters should not just be thank you notes. Then what should I write about? This gentleman did sound very odd. He wants you to write about your studies and your daily life. Write a letter like you'd write to your parents, if you had parents. Mrs. Lippett had more strange instructions for me. That's a very generous amount, Jerusha. The gentleman's name was not Mr. John Smith, yet that was how I should address the letters. I should mail them to his secretary, Mr. Griggs. Mr. Smith will never answer your letters. He hates writing letters. However, he wants to keep track of your progress. He thinks letter writing is good training for a future author. The letters are the only thanks he requires, so treat them like a bill that must be paid. If there is an emergency... An emergency? I hadn't thought about having an emergency at college. For example, if you are expelled, oh my, I hope that doesn't happen. What an embarrassment for the John Greer home. Mrs. Lippett paused for a moment to calm herself and then began again. If you have an emergency, you may write to Mr. Griggs. I looked at the door. My head was whirring with excitement and I wanted to escape. I needed to think. I stood up, but Mrs. Lippett shook her head and I sat back down. I hope that you're grateful for this wonderful opportunity. Not many orphans get a chance to rise in the world. I hope your behavior will make us proud at the John Greer home. You must always remember. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. I must sew a patch on one of the orphan's shirts right now. I leaped up and fled, leaving Mrs. Lippett standing there with her mouth open. Daddy Longlegs, Chapter 3, First Days of School September 24th Dear kind trustee who sends orphans to college, well, here I am at college. I traveled for four hours on the train. I never rode on a train before. College is the biggest, most confusing place I've ever been. I get lost whenever I leave my room. It seems strange to write letters to someone I don't know. Actually, it seems strange to be writing letters at all. I've only written three or four in my life. So please forgive me if my letters aren't perfect. Before I left, Mrs. Lippett and I had a very serious talk. She told me how to behave for the rest of my life, including how I should behave toward you. Jerusha, you must be very respectful to the kind gentleman who's doing so much for you, she said. But how can I be respectful to someone who wants to be called John Smith? I wish he'd chosen a more interesting name. I might as well write letters to Dear Hitching Post. <laughs> Jerusha! <laughs> Mrs. Lippett was shocked. That is not respectful. I thought about you a great deal this summer. You've taken an interest in me. That makes me almost feel that I have a family. It seems as if I belong to somebody now, and I like that feeling. But when I think about you, I have very little to work with. I only know three things about you. One, you are tall. 
Two, you are rich. Three, you hate girls. I suppose I could address you as dear Mr. Girl Hater, but that's rather insulting to me. Or dear Mr. Rich Man, but that's insulting to you. That sounds like money is the only important thing about you. Besides, maybe you won't stay rich for your whole life. Lots of wealthy men lose all their money in the stock market. But at least you'll stay tall all your life. So, I've decided to call you Daddy Longlegs. I hope you won't mind. It's just a private nickname. <laughs> Please don't tell Mrs. Lippet. Let me tell you about my room, which is in a tower in Ferguson Hall. It used to be part of the infirmary before the college built the new one. There are three other girls on the same floor. There's a senior who wears glasses. She's always telling us to be quiet. And two freshmen, Sally McBride and Julia Rutledge Pendleton. Sally has red hair and is quite friendly. Julia comes from one of the wealthiest families in New York. She hasn't noticed me yet. Sally and Julia room together, but the senior and I have singles. Usually freshmen can't get singles, but I got one without even asking. Maybe the college was worried about my behavior around girls raised by proper families. So there are advantages to being an orphan. I'm going to enjoy my own room, especially after spending 18 years in one room with 20 roommates. Sally is the most entertaining person in the world, and Julia is the least entertaining person. Sally thinks everything is funny, and Julia is bored with everything. Julia never makes the slightest effort to be friendly. She believes that if you're born a Pendleton, you deserve only the best things. She and I were born to be enemies. I fix up my room with Sally's help. She has lived in a real house all her life, so I trusted her advice. Let's go to the senior auction, she said the other day. The seniors will be selling things they don't want anymore. When we got to the auction, I had no idea where to begin. But Sally steered me toward a wooden desk. You should bid on that. It's very nice. What about that brown rug over there? I said. But when we looked at it, we noticed an ink spot. The ink spot will make it less expensive. Sally looked around. And with the money you save, you could buy that wicker chair. Then you could put the chair over the spot. So I bought all three items, as well as some yellow curtains and cushions. You can't imagine how fun it is to shop and get change back after paying. Especially since I've never had more than a few cents in my life. I assure you, Daddy dear, I do appreciate the allowance. Well, it's time for me to end my first letter. One more thing. Sally just poked her head in my door. She said, I'm so homesick that I simply can't stand it. Do you feel that way? I smiled a little. No, I think I'll be all right. I've never heard of anyone being orphanage sick. Have you? Yours most respectfully, Jerusha Abbott.